It's Christmas Day. Thank you for joining us. My name is Tom Davis. I'm senior pastor here at Roswell United Methodist Church. This is the day we've been waiting, waiting for and preparing for. And preparation is a holy word. It's a holy word. For over 800 years, the prophets have been talking about when Jesus would be born. We might have been working on it for a few weeks. There are those who start early, maybe a few months. But God's been working on it for eternity to present Jesus Christ here, born this day for you and for me. May it be a day of celebration for all of us. Pray with me. Jesus, what a great day this is and we get to be a part of it. May this day be a day of celebration. Wherever we are, we know that you're present. May we never take that for granted. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. This morning we want to start with one of the great hymns of the church, Joy to the World. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive. This morning, the scripture text is taken from Luke chapter 2. And I'm going to be reading verses 6 through 18. And this is what it says. So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger. Because there was no room for them in the inn. Now, there were in the same country shepherds living out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone round them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. So it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds said to one another, let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told them by the shepherds. They marveled. They marveled, marveled. That's not a word we use too often these days, but our ancestors, they used that word quite often. As a matter of fact, marveling was an activity that they did. That most often it was on a Sunday. On a Sunday where there wasn't work, but time instead for reflection. Yeah. Reflection. We don't, don't have that opportunity very often, a time for reflection. People would gather together and they would go out marveling. That sometimes in, in pairs, sometimes in groups, and sometimes just 
one alone, they, the, the group would go out and they would, would walk together. And if they saw something that was interesting, they would pick it up and they would carry it with them. Sometimes an unusual rock or maybe a feather or maybe a part of a bird egg or an unusual leaf. And, and they would consider that and, 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 and why that it caught their eye and what it was that was, was marvelous to them about that. And they would come back and they would lay them out on the porch and, and they would explain to each other where they found it. And together they would share. And in sharing their, their praise and sharing their joy and what, what God was doing all around them, that together they would marvel at what God was doing. And they called it marveling. It was praise. It was praise of God in the creation. And it, it was in the, the sharing that they, they developed eyes. Eyes that could, could look and see and, and marvel at what God was doing around us. Marveling. That's good practice. It's a great practice. Jesus Christ was born that we might see the hand of God all around us. That we might know that we matter to God and that his love is shown through, through Jesus, God made flesh, who lived right here among us. And, and we can, can read about it. And he reveals himself through scripture today. And we can marvel in the scripture that he reveals. But not only that, not only do we see and and marvel in his, his life, we marvel at his miracles. We marvel that on the cross he gave his life for us and that he rose from the dead and that when he rose from the dead, he rose that, well, that he might live his life through us and that we might have eyes that begin with praise, that begin with the marveling and that we... We keep our eyes open and ready, prepared to be amazed, to marvel. It was the song of the angels. And here during this song, Michael's going to sing, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, another great Christmas song. I want you to, to consider, to reflect, to marvel at the great gifts of God all around you. Hark the herald angels sing Glory to the newborn King Peace on earth and mercy mild God and sinners reconciled Joyful all ye nations rise Join the triumph of the skies with angelic hosts proclaim Christ is born in Bethlehem Hark the herald angels sing Glory to the newborn King Hail the heaven Prince of Peace Light and life to all he brings Riz with healing in his wings Mild he lays his glory by Born that we no more may die Born to raise us from the earth Born to give us second birth. Hark the herald angels sing. Glory to the newborn King. Some of the words of that song, Hark the herald angels sing. Glory to the newborn King. It's in the glory. It's in the marveling. 
It's in the praise that we begin to see Jesus all around us in the practice of praise. But then it goes on to say, peace on earth and mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled. That's the message. That's the message not only that Jesus came to say, it's the message he came to live. And that he died on the cross to give that reconciliation. That we're reconciled with God. Reconciled with God, made right with God. No longer at, at, at war with God. That we can, we can put down our strife, our anger, our fear, our sin. We've been given power, power by the risen Christ to put away, to put away all those things that would conquer us and destroy us, that would, would take our lives and, and make slaves of us. It's what Jesus did on the cross. Well, in leading through worship, it starts with praise, but even as Jesus taught the Lord's Prayer, he started with, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. It's, a, it's giving, pointing to God's holiness. That's what hallowed means. Pointing to his praise, but it doesn't stop at praise. It also goes on to the Lord's Prayer, the way that Jesus taught us, is to forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. There's a time to ask for forgiveness. And worship is a part of that time where we prepare, where we sing praise that that God has reconciled us to him, but we can ask for forgiveness. It's great to know that Jesus forgave you and me on the cross. And we don't have to wrestle that forgiveness from his hand. He's already done that. But most of the time, we don't receive that forgiveness until we ask for it. Until we recognize that where we were wrong. And we can receive that reconciliation. We can receive and give thanks again. Because he's forgiven us. Something we can, can practice. It's something that the angels sang about. It's something we can practice now during this time. Pray with me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. What it is we need this day. And forgive us our trespasses. As as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Forever. Amen. This next song that Michael will sing is, is, what child is this? And I chose this song, yes, because it's, it's one of the great songs, great hymns of the church. The melody goes back to the 1500s. It's over 400 years old. As a matter of fact, Shakespeare, in his, one of his plays, makes mention of, of this song, the tune of it. Green Sleeves is the tune, a very, very, very old tune. But the words of this song, they were added hundreds of years later. In 1871, they were added by William Chatterton Dix. Now, what was interesting to me about William Chatterton Dix is he was not known as a songwriter. William Chatterton Dix was the manager of a maritime insurance company in Glasgow, Scotland. That one of the ways we marvel is that God has chosen to use every gift of praise, 
every gift of repentance and confession, every prayer to turn us toward him. The Lord's Prayer begins with with praise. Hallowed be thy name. And it ends with praise. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. In this service, it's a service where we, we point to God, we marvel, where we might reflect on how we might give praise. Where we also come together in reflection, ask for forgiveness. And then we return again in praise. Join with me as we listen to what child is this. What child is this who laid to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping? Who angels greet with anthems sweet while shepherds watch our keeping? This, this is Christ the King, whom shepherds guard and angels sing. focus of worship is on Jesus Christ through song through prayer through the giving of ourselves as we marvel that God would would want the work of our hands whether we are an insurance broker like like William Dix was or a songwriter whether we're a shepherd or a wise man, that he wants our best, he wants our worst, he wants the, the, the total of us. I'm thankful you chose to join us today. And I hope this day you find, you find something in and around you worth marveling at and you give that praise to God. Join with me in prayer, let's pray. Jesus, this day, give us those eyes that are able to see you in the everyday, in the ordinary, and in the times of reflection, we're able to hear your voice. Give praise to you. Yes, praise in creation, but also, yes, Lord, as the Apostle Paul, in his letters, often gives praise to those who've gone before the mother and the grandmother of, of Timothy, a young disciple. We too have loved ones that have gone before and may today be a day of, of praise, giving thanks for them and how they've impacted our lives. 
May today be a day of praise. That even, even in our confession and asking for repentance, we know that we're reconciled to you. It's not wondering whether we'll receive forgiveness or not. That it's something that we give praise to you and that you'll give us strength enough to forgive ourselves the way that, that you have. The Bible tells us that the forgiveness, it's, it's, it's thrown as far as the east is from the west, our sins. That you've taken our sins on yourself and you've wiped them away. Grant us strength enough that we don't carry them with us any longer. And Lord, may we return again to praise of you to marvel marvel at the work that you do all around us and that our our mouths our lips our hands our feet might spread that that joy joy to the world that you've come it's in Christ's name we pray Amen.